Hi, this is Mark Gaylor, Adobe Photoshop Ambassador for the Asia Pacific region here. And we're going to discuss or uh, feature my top 20 all time favorite uh, tips and techniques for when working in Photoshop CC. Top tip number 13 is frequency separation. Now this is a technique um, often considered an advanced technique that is most usually uh, used for skin retouching um, but this is not the only application for this technique. It's rather a useful technique in, for a broad range of retouching jobs that we might want to undertake. So I've cho chosen an atypical image for this one and I'm going to attempt to retouch the background so it looks like a smooth continuous tone um, background from a photography studio rather than this stage performance that was happening. Okay so um, the first part of the technique um, I've basically automated as an action. Now uh, in order for you to go through these first dozen steps or so uh, rather than learning them manually uh, I would just invite you to download um, the frequency separation action from markgaylor.com website just go to the shop there and you'll see this is listed as a free product so let's just go over to my actions panel uh, select the frequency separation hit the play button and this will pause at the Gaussian blur because this uh, the radius value needs to be chosen um, image by image now the idea with this is we choose a radius value that will remove most of the fine detail or texture from the broader surfaces so a value a little bit higher maybe 14 pixels will do the trick nicely and then the action will complete um, and put the two layers the low frequency and the high frequency in this group now all of the fine detail is on this top high layer and all of the basic shapes are on this low there's absolutely no visible difference between the before and after until we now go in and edit these two layers. Now if you've ever tried using a healing brush without using frequency separation and you move close to a different tone or color you might find that color drawn into your healing area. Now this isn't going to happen when we're using that tool on a high frequency layer because that high frequency layer has no color. Okay so this is uh, this is the advantage of this technique and it's why it's so often used for skin retouching uh, i.e. when we're moving up to lips or eyeshadow of a different color uh, we don't we're not faced with that problem okay so um, I can um, and you, you can go in and make uh, the areas of smooth continuous tone even smoother by making a selection of that area and applying more Gaussian blur personally I think this um, this area behind the smooth detail is pretty much smooth enough there's a little bit of a bump and undulation there if that was the case I would simply um, select um, that area okay and apply more Gaussian blur so filter blur and choose Gaussian blur and crank that Gaussian blur a little bit higher and that will smooth that area up even more so that's the idea with this low frequency layer is to create smooth flowing contours and again in uh, portrait retouching that would be the perfect jawline or cheek line without any uh, minor undulations there uh, most of the work however for this project is done on the high frequency layer and I've uh, managed to create a selection that I've already saved uh, of selecting just the wall. So let's just go in and um, uh, load that selection. I'll just go load selection and uh, choose my wall as my um, channel which is where the save selection is and there's my save selection okay so I'm just going to remove most of the uh, detail from this high frequency layer uh, not um, slowly using a tool such as maybe the spot healing brush tool okay now if you use um, uh, this tool uh, and you're not paying attention to the options in the options bar you might get um, some adjustments that you're not expecting 
for instance that like I can quite clearly see where I've been trying to retouch and the problem with that one was because I had sample all layers selected okay so if you are going to do this slowly you need to just um, uncheck that option there and just click with that option unchecked and then you'll be good to go I'm not going to uh, do this um, one by one however I'm going to try and look for a filter that will do most of them um, at once and that filter is found in the noise menu and it's dust and scratches and if you choose a radius high enough you should be able to remove most of that detail perhaps not all but most of the fine detail I'm going to leave that setting not too high I'll remove the rest of the larger um, uh, detail uh, and remove that manually as long as it gets rid of most of the detail so uh, I'll just raise that a little bit higher now um, you can't have the threshold set too low otherwise it will make that background look like extruded plastic okay you do need a little bit of threshold maybe five or six just to give that a little bit of texture in there so I'll select uh, OK to apply that adjustment uh, I'll lose the selection command or control D on a PC and then I'll uh, use the um, spot healing brush tool uh, this time um, I'm going to do this on a separate layer so I'm just going to add a new layer and if I'm doing this not on the high frequency layer but on a separate layer I'm going to have to sample all layers because there are no pixels on this empty new layer to adjust and now I can simply wipe down that join in the background and remove that broader detail now sometimes you might need a couple of passes to remove some of this broader detail but you can quite quickly see that uh, most of the time just with the spot healing brush tool is I can get a good fix now occasionally you might get a little break and you might have to switch and select the source point for the healing brush if you're feeling particularly lazy you might just try a couple of times uh, hoping that Photoshop will find the best source point okay so command Z and uh, just try that one more time and uh, that's a good enough fix for this one and that one and now I'll wipe down over that crease and you can quite quickly see that I can start retouching and making the perfect background uh, from this uh, what was a very grungy background okay so I could carry on working a little bit longer on that but I think you get the idea so if I just do a quick before and after okay and you can see I've cleaned up that uh, background uh, quite quickly uh, using the frequency separation um, workflow.